everybody, Lord Tremendous here, and as you can possibly tell, I have a new headset, uh, which is why you're able to hear me without rolling your eyes, or maybe that's why you're rolling your eyes, I don't care. Anyway, I can bring you Battle Reports again, uh, well, you know, with decent audio at least, and so I am. Here's Battle Report number 54. This is a uh, 2v2 team battle, uh, 4,500 points a side, 2250 a person. This is in uh, practice for the Adepticon tournament in March, which is uh, super exciting. So me and my partner, tis I, Lord Tremendous, and my partner, the Punisher. I'm, of course, playing Ogre Cons. He's playing the Kingdom of Equitain. And we are against Cannon of Doom and Sex Panther. Cannon of Doom is playing uh, Empire of uh, Sonstal, and Sex Panther is playing his Demon Legions. I know, weird combos, but I think they'll work. And uh, it's actually a lot of fun. I honestly didn't think the littler you know, armies would be fun to play or anything like that, and it was actually kind of neat. Not something I'd want to do all the time, but uh, definitely neat, and I like the team aspect of it. Uh, but this is just our first attempt at uh, some lists. They are legal, and no, I'm not going to post them because I don't want everyone to know what we're taking, because it's a surprise. Uh, well, unless you can piece it together during the battle report. So, uh, yeah, sit back, relax, and get ready to see how it goes. Normally, this is where I put my army list, but like I just said, I'm not posting any army list, neither mine nor my opponents. I don't know if my opponents are going to end up going or what the deal is, but uh, these games are practice games for the Adepticon, uh, the team event, so I don't want to post our lists on here because we want to do well in the event. We want to win it if we can, and I don't want people to see it and go, oh, this, that, and the other thing. If you have any questions about the list or whatever, feel free to put them in the comment section below. Uh, I'm sure if you're really adamant about it and you're really, really uh, you know, pay attention to these practice games. You can piece together what we have. Uh, hell, I'll probably even say it at some point. <laughs> but I don't want to post any lists or anything like that, just simply because it's the uh, team tournament. So that's why you won't see any army lists during these types of reports. You'll see them in my normal 1v1 games, even if they are practice for the Adepticon. Here are my spells, and they're exactly what you're looking like, or looking at, anyway. And I know what you're thinking. Why are you taking magic? Magic's a waste. I love shamanism. I love the magic system. I know a lot of people dislike it. I know a lot of people are making their lists work without magic. I love the magic. Uh, the only thing I'm thinking about is possibly dropping the demon heart, because it's not overly necessary. However, you know, the minute I do is the minute I'll run into, like, the six level four friggin' wizards running around. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, these are my spells, and I'm always going to take shamanism because I love that path. Here's deployment, and uh, me and my partner set up first, I believe. Yes, we did. And uh, from right to left, I have some trappers. I've got my rock a rock uh, elf eater with Shy on top. I've got the Lord Tremendous model in there. That is Lord Tremendous because it's a smaller list. And then I've got my big old brick of 11 tribesmen with Skaz attached, and Skaz is my general in this game. Uh, right next to us is a group of Crusader peasants with uh, extra hand weapons and the Reliquy in it. And I, there might be a character. I can't remember. Uh, then he's got a unit of knights with a character in it. He's got a Pegasus. He's got a Paladin on a Pegasus. Uh, and he's badass. And then he's got another unit of knights, uh... Asp aspirant knights, aspirant knights, something like that. And uh, yeah, that is really it for our list. <laughs> 2250. Really small. You would suppose there'd be more, but no, no, there's not. Uh, on my uh, opponent's side, both of their sides, on our right, here's a unit of uh, Inner Circle Knights, I believe. Right next to them is a unit of Halberdiers, and I think there's a character in there. Right next to them is a group of, oh god, those uh, Imperial Guard guys that I'm terrified of, with a character. Uh, right next to that is a volley gun, and there's an engineer attached, and yes, I am scared to death of that thing. Well, it's not attached, but there's an engineer right behind it. Uh, next to them is a huge unit of slaughterers with a Herald of Wrath in there, and I believe that is his general. Uh, behind them is a cannon. Right in front of the cannon is his dogs. Next to them is a unit of skirmishing hand... I don't know, they're skirmishers and they've got pistols. I don't remember what they're called, but they're Empire, all mixed in with the demons. These Empire guys really need to explain themselves. And then right next to them is a proxied unit of Furies. Those are not just a skirmishing unit of slaughterers, although that would be kind of cool. But yes, there's deployment.
So, yeah, I got so excited to play the game, I screwed up. I did not take a picture of top of one after movement. My opponents moved. I was paying attention to them. Me and my uh, partner were talking strategy, and I completely forgot to take a picture. So, trust me, my opponents moved. You'll see it in bottom of one. <laughs> So, nothing happens in magic, because I don't believe either of them have magic. I think maybe my Empire opponent has the bound spells, but other than that, neither of them took a wizard. So, we go straight into shooting, and his cannon tries to fire at, gosh, I think the peasants or something like that. And it misfires five, which is uh, pretty outstanding. Good, good start. Good start for us. And that's it for top of one. So we go over here to bottom of one after movement. Yay, remember to take a picture. Good for me. And we move forward a lot. My uh, partner, he charged his uh, leftmost unit of knights into the skirmishing furies and made it. Uh, the only reason he made it is because he has that impetuous rule or whatever where he gets to re-roll his, uh, his charges and stuff. And so he made it, which was awesome. That's going to be huge, taking those guys out early. Uh, I moved up on the right. I kind of moved uh, Elf Eater a little bit because I baited his knights with my trappers. My opponent knew what I was doing. He just figured his knights could take Elf Eater, I guess. And, uh, well, I was curious to see if he was right. Lord Tremendous is right next to Elf Eater. He's going to back him up just in case. Uh, so, yeah, the trappers move up. They were going to throw stuff at the knights. I did not expect them to do anything. But if they did, awesome. Uh, if the knights charged the... Uh, the trappers, that's great. Lord Tremendous and Elf Eater would slam into them and hopefully deal with the Halberdiers and the Imperial Guard next turn. Uh, my big unit of tribesmen and my uh, partner's big unit of peasants move up to bait the slaughterers. Uh, we were kind of hoping that his slaughterers would charge the peasants because they could take it. And then my tribesmen would go in afterwards and hopefully eat them up. Uh, his other unit uh, knights are just basically getting ready to be the anvil to whatever we have to hammer. And, of course, his paladin on a pegasus is just basically moving around to get a better angle at everything. He doesn't want to get cannoned off the table, so we're looking forward to seeing how this works out. And uh, pretty much that's it for movement. There's a better picture of my partner's knights hitting the uh, skirmishing unit of Furies, the proxied unit of Furies, and that's going to go well. I'm glad to get rid of that unit early. During the magic phase, I believe I do Awaken the Beast on this unit and give them plus one strength just in case anything is foolish enough to charge them. They can put it down pretty easy. They have a five up ward. I'm not too eager to get their toughness off. And honestly, I was just trying to draw out the spell dice so I could get Cheapskate back on the table. But uh, our opponents knew better. <laughs> Wouldn't let me. Uh, they let this spell go off so they could stop Cheapskate. And they did, which was a shame. We go into combat and my partner's knights just eat the Furies alive. As you can see, they took no wounds, and the Furies took all the wounds. Uh, they were frenzied. They overran. They overran like four inches. It wasn't a big deal. Didn't put them out of uh, position or anything like that. It was beautiful. Perfect use of those knights. With that, we go over here to top of two after movement, and once again, I remember to take the picture. Yay! Uh, as you can see, the, uh, the, the Demon Empire Sonstal Combo Alliance is pissed off. They come forward a lot. Uh, his halberdiers come forward, and I'm very tempted to charge him with Lord Tremendous because I believe it would be a flank. Although, the knights did charge the trappers. I knew the knights were going to be in beautiful range for Elf Eater, but I started thinking that Lord Tremendous and Elf Eater slamming into his halberdiers would be a much better charge. So I'm mulling that one over there. Meanwhile, the knights slam into the trappers, like I said, and so yeah, the trappers are dead. They did stand and shoot twice. They actually did some wounds, but my opponent was able to armor save all of them, go figure. Uh, his slaughters tried to charge the Crusaders and failed by, like, an, less than an inch. It was about a half an inch he failed by, so we got lucky there. Uh, the dogs move up just to support the slaughterers. The cannon turns to face the knights. Probably going to take a pot shot at the paladin. And uh, that's pretty... Well, and his, uh, the Empire guys, the Imperial Guard, they move behind the house. Um... I didn't understand that. I didn't understand it at all. Maybe he was worried about the tribesmen or something. Uh, well, you'll see what happens in a little bit. That's it for movement. There's a better picture of the Sunstall Knight slamming into my, uh, my trappers, and it's death for them. But hopefully that means it's future death for the knights, you know? The sacrifice play. So we go into shooting. 
my opponents, uh, he fires his volley gun, I think at the tribesmen, possibly at Elf Eater, I don't care. Uh, and he misfires, and he misfires like two, no, misfires one, and the volley gun can't shoot for the rest of the game. <laughs> There was a lot of celebrating on my side of the table. There was a lot of um, um, anger on my opponent's side, and it's totally understandable. <laughs> uh, we said it, too. We said it. That volley gun right there, stop not being able to shoot for the rest of the game, changed our tactics 180 degrees. It was huge, and uh, we couldn't have been happier. Our opponents could have been, but we, we were just thrilled. Then we go into combat, and his knights obliterate my trappers. There was no mercy, <sighs> and it's a shame. But uh, that was the sacrifice play. That's what was supposed to happen. So his knights ended up just reforming to kind of face towards Lord Tremendous and Elf Eater, so that was it. Uh, we go over here to bottom of two, and as you can see on the right flank there, it's empty. Let me explain. Lord Tremendous decided, I decided I could charge Lord Tremendous into the knights, and I should be able to deal with them. They're not going to be high strength, because they're not going to get the charge. Yeah, they're going to have a lot of armor, but I should be able to slowly but surely whittle them down. And so I decided, all right, I'm going to charge Lord Tremendous into your knights. Well, between my opponent's knights and the table edge was about nine inches. So my opponent decided to flee. It made sense. I understood. So I was like, all right, fine. I'm not going to redirect or anything like that. Elf Eater is going to charge the uh, Halberdier unit. Halberdier unit fails its terror check and bolts like three inches. I mean, not far at all. He went literally three or four inches. Elf Eater, in turn, goes about 16 to 17 inches. <laughs> I hit them and slaughter the entire unit of Halberdiers. The knights flee off the table edge, because uh, he rolled like a 10 or a 12 for them. Uh, so the knights flee off the table. The halberdiers get just knocked into paste by Elf Eater and Shy. And then, of course, the Imperial Guard unit was within six inches of a unit destroyed, panicked, went through the volley gun, and the volley gun, although it can't shoot, does fail its panic check and cowers. The only thing on the Empire side and the right, uh, right side of the table that made its panic check was the engineer. <laughs> no, that's a lie too. The engineer failed the panic check as well. So uh, the uh, Sandstall side of the, of the table just completely collapsed from the combined charges of Lord Tremendous and Elf Eater, and I couldn't have been more pleased. <laughs> Uh, due to the fact that we didn't have to worry about the volley gun anymore, our tribesmen, my tribesmen and my opponent's uh, crusaders backed up a little bit. Uh, we were going to throw stuff and, and try to magic up the slaughterers a little bit, maybe even the hellhounds. There was no reason to charge. There was no reason to be fast anymore. Uh, my opponent, or my partner's knights and his paladin on a pegasus turned to face the cannon uh, because they're going to try to take that out before it can kill them. Uh, his other unit of knights stays put just because he's getting ready to go after the dogs when he gets a chance. And that's it for movement. Huge movement phase. <laughs> There's a better picture of everything fleeing. Uh, the knights going away, and of course, <laughs> Elf Eater doing the uh, Mexican hat dance on top of the Halberdier unit. It was glorious. During the magic phase, I get awakened to Beast off on the Crusaders again for the same reason. This time I went with Toughness, uh, just in case something gets a hold of them. I want it to be more difficult for them to get hurt. So we, uh, we they let it go off again because they wanted to stop the uh, Totemic Summon spell. So that unit has plus one Toughness this round. And then in the shooting phase, the Paladin on a Pegasus has the Dragon Lance and spit hot fire all over the skirmishers in the forest, killing five out of ten of them. They do pass their panic check, but that is excellent. That unit is now much less scary. Nothing else. We have no combat in that round, so we go over here to top of three after movement. And his hellhounds charge the crusaders and make it no problem. Uh, the slaughters move up as fast as they can. Well, not as fast as they can. They move up pretty fast in order to try to get closer. You know what? They may have tried to charge uh, that unit and failed again, and they just ended up where they're at now. I can't remember. I think maybe it was a failed charge. Uh, the skirmishing still guys move up to shoot at the... Uh, Peg Knight, the cannon charges into the knights and actually makes it, which is really bad. Uh, the Imperial Guard guys, I believe, do rally and turn around the face. The Engineer rallies, turns the face. The, uh, what's it called? 
uh, 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 I was going to say the volley gun rallies, but I wasn't fleeing, so it doesn't matter. And that's pretty much it for movement. Yeah, I was right. The slaughterers did try to charge again and failed. However, the hellhounds made it, and there's a picture of that. And there's a better picture of that cannon slamming into my uh, partner's knights, which is probably bad for them. Nothing happens in magic or shooting, go figure. So we go straight into combat, and it's busy. Uh, the knights end up d losing two of their ranks. The cannon, I believe, takes two wounds. Uh, so charge, two wounds, two, two wounds, and there's a banner. Musicians don't do anything. They do have a rank. Uh, we win by one, but nothing happens. My opponent's easily able to make his leadership check. Over here, that toughness spell was huge. He loses like four crusaders, almost nothing. In return, they kill two or three of the dogs. Uh, they win this combat, but again, my opponent is able to make his leadership check and loses nothing in return. Or maybe it was because he lost some in return that there's only two of the dogs left. I don't remember exactly, but that's what it looks like after combat and uh, crumble checks. And there was a slight reform, not a big deal, but the two dogs were just kind of pushed over. Just wanted to make sure we showed everything. So here we are in bottom of three after movement, and there's a bunch of charges. The knights and the tribesmen slam into the slaughters. We could barely fit in, but we fit in as much as we could. Uh, the peg knight goes into the cannon to try to help out the knights. Elf Eater goes into the volley gun because it has to die on principle. Lord Tremendous comes around the house in order to put a little bit of threat on the Imperial Guard. And that's really it for movement. There's about a picture of the knights and the tribes and slamming into the slaughters, and uh, that's probably as ideal as it's going to get. And there's about a picture of Elf Eater slamming into the volley gun, and that's about as ideal as it's going to get. And there's about a picture of the peg knights slamming into cannon that try to save the little knights errant that are in over their heads. During the magic phase, I get awakened a beast off on uh, the tribesmen. I give them plus one strength. The idea here is all my wounds wound on two. I'm going to have enough trouble hitting these guys as it is. I want everything that hits to potentially wound. Uh, so yeah, it went off and Scarification is on Skaz, which is good because he's about to accept the challenge. During the shooting phase, uh, Lord Tremendous fires his uh, Ogre Crossbow into the uh, Imperial Guard, and I think I killed two, but uh, you know what? Uh, it's, it's two more than I killed last time, so that's something. So we go into combat, and it is brutal. The plus one strength was very telling. Uh, I, I ended up losing one tribesman, and another one took two wounds. Uh, the knights took a couple of wounds. Not a huge big deal, but not great. Uh, the Slaughters, on the other hand, took a ton. 4, 8, 12, 13, 14 wounds, I think, before Crumble Checks. We lose by an avalanche load. Or we, I'm sorry, we win by an avalanche. My opponent was able to roll pretty low on his Crumble Check, and that's what it looks like after all the bodies are cleared off the table. And the Slaughters have become the Slaughtered, and I'm okay with that. In the challenge, his little Herald of Wrath attacked Skaz, but thanks to Scarification, he was not able to wound me, so uh, I'll take luck over skill any day. Then over here, Elf Eater and Shyhammer were able to just obliterate the volley gun. And I think I made a mistake. I think when it comes to artillery weapons and stuff like that, you're not allowed to overrun. Uh, I'm almost positive that's the case. You can reform, but you can't overrun. Not sure exactly how that works with Frenzy, which rule takes precedence, because I have to overrun after I win combat. But uh, I guess since I can't, I don't know. That's a debate. What do you think? Put it in the comments section. Let me know what you think. I think you can't. I think I made a mistake here and should not have overrun. Uh, let me know how you see it. And then in combat over here, the two remaining hellhounds, although there was only two, they were able to kill like eight of these guys or something. In return, they got... No, I'm sorry. They weren't able to kill eight. The ones on the left side are actually behind him because he reformed. He killed the dogs. They did kill a bunch of the, the crusaders, but they got killed in return. And he reformed. And the ones on the left that aren't on the movement tray, since he reformed, are actually supposed to be behind him. It's just that hill makes it impossible, so... That's why it looks like that. But the Hellhounds are dead, and that's really all you should care about. In combat over here, solely because of the friggin' uh, Paladin on the peg, that cannon gets destroyed. I don't think he loses any more knights from his unit uh, before the, he's able to kill off the cannon, but uh, either way, cannon's dead, and that's really, really good. And then the knights in the Pegasus, uh, or the Paladin on the Pegasus, turn to face the skirmishers in the forest because they have to die before they can do any more harm. 
That's it for combat, so here we go to top of four after movement. And the Imperial Guard, duh, charge Elf Eater into the flank and make it no problem. Other than that, uh, I believe his skirmishing guys fall back into the forest because they're stubborn in the forest and they don't want to die. And I honestly think that's about it. There's a better picture of his imp guard slamming into my elf feeder, and that sucks. There is no magic, and uh, we skip... Sh well, nothing happens in shooting, so we go into combat, and elf feeder doesn't even get a chance to swing. Well, no, he does get a chance to swing, it's just there's a big bunch of flubs. I attack his character, I put two wounds on him, I think I did one wound to the unit, and they did at least six wounds to me, destroying elf feeder. But again, I don't think I was supposed to charge or overrun there. I think I screwed up and my opponents got uh, exactly what they deserved for my failure. Either way though, he probably would have just charged Elf Eater in the front and I'd have been just as dead. Oh well. In combat over here, uh, this time, even with Scarification, his Herald of Wrath is able to put a couple of wounds through on Skaz. His unit's able to kill one of my tribesmen. They don't do anything to the knights. We are able to kill off another, looks like, six of those guys. Uh, we win this combat, barely. But Sex Panther uh, rolls high enough on his uh, crumble check to lose the rest of his unit. His BSB is, or I'm sorry, not his BSB, his Herald of Wrath, his general is still there. Still in a challenge with Skaz, but in this, I gave Skaz a great weapon. This particular list, he has a great weapon. So he is kind of doing some damage to him. You can kind of see the wound uh, tokens behind him there in the picture. So he's on his last legs. Maybe I can get lucky next turn. Maybe not. You're about to find out. And in order to show you what happened, here's bottom of four after movement. So, with everything but the Herald, with the demons being destroyed now, the rest of the army pretty much stacks up to get ready to go after the Imperial Guard, because they're super dangerous. Uh, his knights charge the skirmishing guys in the forest, they flee, and the knights fail. Uh, the rest of the knights, the Crusaders and Lord Tremendous, all start surrounding the Imperial Guard, even the Peg Knight. Our peg Paladin of Pegasus, uh, we're all surrounded Imperial Guard getting ready to go after them. And with the character in that unit with two wounds on him, if we can get rid of him, they'll lose hatred or whatever it is, and that could be huge. But anyway, that's it for movement. There's about a picture of knights uh, forcing the skirmishers to flee, because, you know, skirmishers aren't stupid, and failing their charge. During the magic phase, I get awakened to beast off again. This time, uh, for toughness, I want to make it as hard as possible for this thing, or for the uh, Herald Wrath to wound Skaz, because uh, even though with Scarification does make it that more difficult, Awaken a Beast is a spell I know they're going to let me get off because they do not want me to get Totemic Summon off, which is smart. We go into close combat, and not only does Skaz weather the Herald of Wrath's attacks, he's not able to wound him, Skaz is able to slip the last wound through on the Herald of Wrath, killing him, and uh, that's friggin' unheard of. If I don't do something fast, Skaz is gonna survive this game, and what am I gonna do with my reputation then? Oh, it's not easy being me, but I'm damn pleased that Skaz is able to kill the Herald. That's awesome. Here's top of five after movement, and for the most part, there isn't any. My opponent really doesn't have anywhere to go, anything to do. He does rally his skirmishers that fled from the knights, and that's about it. With that, we go over here to bottom of five after movement, and everything charges the imp guard. Uh, as well, and the knights charge the skirmishers. The knights make it into the skirmishers because they decide to stand and shoot. The dangerous terrain, I think, is what caused the uh, two wounds the knights took. But since they're frenzy on the charge, they didn't care and didn't have to take a panic. Uh, on the right side of the screen, you'll see Lord Tremendous, the Paladin on a Pegasus, and a unit of knights slamming into the Imperial Guard. That's a lot of pain. The Tribesmen and the Crusaders charged as well, but they failed. And that's it for movement. There's a better picture of three guys making it. I didn't bother showing the slower units not making it, but that should be a good combat, even with everything that's in there. So, not there. I skip magic, and there's no shooting, so we go straight into combat, and it's brutal. Lord Tremendous takes, like, a wound, a couple knights die, the Paladin on the Pegasus takes a wound, but we slaughter, like, three ranks worth of uh, Imperial Guard guys with great weapons. Uh, we weren't able to kill his character. I don't remember if there was a challenge issued or what happened, but we weren't able to kill the character. So the unit has Bodyguard. They are stubborn. But it doesn't matter, because my opponent rolls boxcars for his leadership check and breaks. 
uh, gets run down no problem. Ends up running away from the knights, and uh, the knights and Lord Tremendous both pursue. Uh, I believe both of us caught him. That's where we ended up, and the paladin on a peg knight turns around to go after the uh, skirmishers. And the, no, not the skirmishers, the uh, engineer, because that's one of the last things that left on the table. And then in combat over here, go figure, the knights on a charge were able to eviscerate all the skirmishers. And then uh, once they were all dead, they had to overrun and they get through the force without taking another failed dangerous terrain. So that was cool. And uh, that pretty much seals it. But there's still the engineer to deal with. So here is top of six after movement, and as you can see, the only thing that kind of happens is the engineer runs away. <laughs> he ran towards our left as fast as the little guy could go, and that's where he ended up, and that is it for his turn. So here we are in bottom of six after movement, and there was a charge, I believe the Paladin and the Pegasus uh, charge, it fled and got away, so everybody else made a beeline towards the Engineer to try to kill the stupid thing. <laughs> Skaz even came out of the good old boys to try to get uh, a spell or two off at him. I think I have Swarm of Insects, I'm not 100% on that. Uh, so yeah, everybody came out trying to get a hold of this shit, because there is no mercy in this dojo. Uh, and that's it for movement. During the magic phase, I'm able to get none other than Cheapskate on the table, which is super exciting. And I got the big one off too, so he can be more than uh, he can be up to 10 inches away from the table edge. And he comes screaming onto the table to try to take out this engineer. And then we go into the shooting phase, and Cheapskate uses his breath weapon on the engineer, killing her dead. <laughs> Oh, shamanism is the best path in the game. I love it. Absolutely love it. What a perfect way to end this crazy-ass game. <laughs> And there it is. There's the end of the game. There's nothing left of our opponents, and we are relatively okay. Uh, obviously, it helped a ton that more than half of the Empire Sonstal army fled off the table due to a failed... Well, not flat off the table. The knights just completely got off the table, and the uh, Halberdier guys got thunder-stomped to death by Elf Eater and Shyhammer, so... <laughs> Yeah, that, that probably uh, helped a ton. Uh, everything kind of going our way. The volley gun misfiring and everything right away. This game was very much one-sided and in our favor. And I'm well aware that it wasn't a great... Uh, test of our list, but it was a lot of fun. It was neat to see the mechanics. It was neat to see how it would how it would work, how we would you know uh, uh, mesh together and stuff. And I gotta say, ogres and uh, equitain really do well together. But you know what? Let's get into the recap right away because this game is over. That's it, man. Game over, man. It's game over. So, as you saw, it was a victory for Lord Tremendous and the Punisher. Pretty good one, too. We tabled our opponents by the bottom of turn 6, which was uh, just in the nick of time. Not a bad first run. It was great to see how we would work together, how our armies would uh, mesh together and everything like that. Uh, the uh, synergy and everything like that. So, all in all, not complaining. It was, was uh, one-sided because of a lot of unfortunate events on my opponent's side, but still good first run. Like I said, the uh, Sonstal army breaking early on gave us a huge advantage. I mean, his knights and his halberdier unit destroyed at the same time, and his imperial guard, and his engineer, and his volley gun going down, you know, all in turn two, pretty much sealed us the game. We were playing 4500 against 2250, and uh, I'm well aware of that. Poor Sex Panther and his demons put up a hell of a fight, though. They really, really tried, and uh, gotta respect them for not giving up. It was interesting to have uh, the Equitain as as an ally too. I, I yeah, I, I'm. I know this is only our first game. I know it's it was very one sided. I know a lot of crazy stuff happened, but uh, really gave us a lot of conf or gave me a lot of confidence anyway. My opponent didn't seem upset, <laughs> or my partner anyway. But uh, yeah, yeah, it was like I said, it was it was neat to see it in action. My partner and I are both very aware that we need more practice games before we can, you know, stake the flag in the ground and be like, yep, we're going to win, yay! Uh, having luck is such a great factor on our side is, is great and all, but uh, <laughs> maybe we should up our skill a little bit. Uh, like I said earlier, I'm toying with dropping the Demonic Heart. I don't know if I need it anymore. Just not that many people are taking magic and it doesn't really affect bounce spells, so might not. 
Uh, what I did learn from this is having two big bricks, his big crusader unit and my big tribesman unit, are a powerful combo. And uh, it should be very interesting to see how people deal with it in 2250 lists, even though it's 4500, you know what I mean. Uh, so I'm hoping that that's an advantage. It could be a disadvantage, time will tell. This was an excellent game, though, even with everything that was going on. I mean, it went great for us. It really did. <laughs> and that ending. Way to go, Cheapskate! <laughs> uh, excellent opponents. Really, those guys are great. I really am happy that uh, they were able to team up like that for us. They're, they're super useful and uh, hopefully help us place well in the uh, team tournament in March. Uh, my teammate was great, no complaints at all, we, you know, synergized great, and, uh, hopefully I can say that about every game we play together. Definitely looking forward to our new team game, or to our next team match, and, uh, Adepticon players, fear us in the team tournament. <laughs>Real quick, guys and gals, I want to say thank you to everybody that uh, supports me financially through Patreon, PayPal, and other means. Uh, I do have a decent amount of people that support me. Uh, not all of them allow me to thank them on my battle reports. Uh, some want to stay anonymous, and I respect that. However, these are the individuals that allow me to thank them properly, and so I will take this moment to do so. Alex of the Vale Renegades, South Florida's Gamer Mancy Team, Daniel Jolson, and Caillou Choi. Thank you guys very, very much. I very much appreciate it. And I hope I continue to be worthy of your patronage as uh, the battle reports continue. Thanks, guys. But that's going to do it. That's it for battle report number 54. It is officially in the history books. As always, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or complaints, feel free to put them in the comment section below, and I will get back to you as quick as I can. But yeah, guys, thanks. Thanks.